All right. In this video, we're going to uh, actually grow the snake when we get some food, and we're going to remove the food because we don't want to stick around if we've eaten it. So let's uh, let's see. Uh, looks like we have is on food. I might have left that already. Is on food. We need to know if we're on the food. And one of the things we want to do is since the way our snake works is that we move, we draw a new part of the snake and remove the old part so that it looks like we're, we're, we've moved. Really, we've just um, drawn a whole new square. Uh, let's take off that part where we remove the tail for now. And because we only remove the tail if we haven't grown. So let's see. Let's do... We're going to need an array. Oh, do we have an array of food? We have an array of food. We need to check and see if we're on food. So let's see. In tick, we need to have um, maybe food. That's maybe make some food. And then we need to do, when we do a move, then after that, we need to call. Um, and I had a function called check food, but that doesn't really. That doesn't really mean anything. It's not expressive. So I'm going to say grow if on food. And food is just an array of points, x, y, objects with x and y fields. Um, I could call that like food points, but I'm just going to call it food just because I like it. So grow if on food. Now we need to know, like, we need to know where we are. And it's the head that can eat food. Um, no other body part should be able to get onto food. Uh, until food starts to move, that might be something we add. So let's get the head of the snake. So let's say um, const uh, snake head. And in order to get the head, we want the first part. So we go parts and we get the first one. And then we can say if the snake head uh, will grow if the snake head is on the food. So let's do. Sixty-five. I think we'll grab that code. Come back here, and I put that under move. So let's do. Let's do down here. So check food. We said grow. Or I said rather grow if on food. And this could be, you know, this is point, but um, in order for this function to make sense, we can say like snake head point so that we are growing if the snake head point is on food. So we can say has grown <clears throat> and we can pass that snake. Oh, why did I capitalize that? I'm used to Erlang where you capitalize your variables. Snake head point. And so then we're gonna need a has grown function. This is going to be um, really this should probably be um, snake head point as well so that it's obvious yeah. um, that we've grown if the snake head point is on food and I've, I've added this function even though it's only one line I wanted to put I wanted to say why um, I wanted to express that we have grown if we're on food so the function has grown if all it does is check if you're on food then it, it obvious it's obvious that relationship is there you have grown if you're on food. And I think we already have that is on food. However, I don't like this is on function because elements is not expressive. Like we don't know, like how, how would we know that a point is on an element? That's just an abstract, um, uh, it's an element in an array. It's one of, the, one of the items in an array. I'd rather have this be like, you know, check point. So is, is this point on this point? And so we can say maybe maybe point equals and oh sorry it's not it's an it's a collection of, of points it's an array so if checkpoints dot find and we can say check point and then if check point there that's a little more obvious that um, 
we're checking if a point is on some other points, and then this maybe element we need to change. That's maybe point. So if this point is on one of these points, and we could even call it is is on one of, um, but it should be fairly obvious that if this we give one point and a list of points, we're checking to see if this point is on one of those points, and then you just have to read a couple lines of code to figure that out. So we'll leave that there. So we know if we've grown, and then we need to uh, we need to go back to our has grown function. Function has grown. And that actually we need our grow if on food. So now we know has grown, we know if we've grown. If has grown, then we remove the food because we've eaten it. Otherwise, we pop off, we remove the last element of the array. And the way we draw the snake is we draw a new snake head in a new place, and then we remove the snake tail. Well, in this case, we don't want to remove the snake head if we've eaten. We want to make it look like we've grown. So we can just leave that tail where it is. But if we're not on food, then we can pop off the end of the tail. And we'll get rid of this that logic because that's for later and let's save this and I don't remember where I'm at so I'm just gonna go run this code and see what breaks and you can see that if uh, you keep adding food or if you keep keep it running it'll keep adding food so let's see if we get a food and I don't want to waste time waiting for food there's no reason why we can't for now just change this to something like 0.6 so 60% of the time we'll get food so let's retry this. Now we've got food right away. Actually, I can just go up. You have to hit the arrow after, oh no, after the snake has moved. Oh, we've got a problem. Remove food is not defined. So we have, we need a remove food function. Let's go get that uh, function, remove food. Here and that was below. Let's just down at the bottom somewhere. So there's our remove food function. Um, we're getting a, we're getting a point that our food is a point that has an x coordinate and a y coordinate, and we're going to do this filter. So this is an array. This food is an array. We're going to filter out anything where the um, filter means that we're going to keep anything that this function returns true. Um, so this here within the parentheses is a function. It's an anonymous function. And it, what it will do is it'll take that point, it'll destructure it into an X and a Y. So this is one of the, the each food element will go into this function and we'll destructure it into an X and a Y. And then we'll say, does that X equal the remove X? And if it doesn't, then we're okay. We can keep this food. It's not on the point that we're trying to remove. Or if the Y is not on the point that we're trying to move, then we know that we, this this point does not match that point. So this we can go look this up. This filter function. I've already looked it up, but you just you know you can do MDN MDN array filter, and here it is. Let me go read it. It says the filter method creates a new array with all elements that pass the test implemented by the provided function. So here they show you that. They do, they have a words array and they say filter, and this is their anonymous function that says take each word. So words filter, this filter function will pass each word into this, this anonymous function. And they've designed the anonymous function so that the parameter is called word. So each word, if the word dot length, and it looks like you can get the length of a string just by saying, just by accessing the length property, if word length is greater than six, then this function right here will return true and then filter will keep that word and put it in the new new array. So this is their new array. And when they log that out, they'll get exuberant destruction and present. Those are the words that had more than six letters. So we want all the, all the points in the food array that don't have the same X or same Y as whatever food we're trying to remove. And then we'll assign that new array to the food global variable. And I could call this like global food or something to say that it's a global variable, but I'm not going to. It, if I do um, let and const for all the other variables that aren't global, then it might be obvious that anything that doesn't have that is either a mistake or it's a global variable. So let's go back to our game. See what other what other bugs we have. Okay, this is a little bit slow for me. Uh, 
I don't want to wait around all this time. So I am going to go down to where we do um, our interval. Where is interval? And this, this is a magic number that I left in here. I shouldn't have. This is um, how many milliseconds we want to wait between each tick. And I'm going to make this into a global variable. I'm going to call that um, interval ms. No, interval millis. So it's obvious. And then I can go set that up up here. Const interval millis. And I'm going to set that to be 100 milliseconds so that my snake moves a lot faster. And here, it, since it's up at the top, this is all the stuff I can configure at any time. Like I can change our food to be brown. That doesn't really look like brown to me, but that's okay. So let's do that. Now, now my snake is moving a lot faster and I can pick up. Okay, so what's our error that we're getting? Point is not defined at line 79. So it's saying point is not defined and it's saying at grow if on food line 79. So let's go check out line 79. Um, and it says point is not defined. So, th oh, that's because this is snake head point. So let's go back, refresh. There we go, we'll eat some food. There we go, we're growing, and the food is disappearing. So this is um, maybe later on in the game because this is challenging. We can change the snake as maybe you get up levels or get up in length or something. We start to make the the snake move faster, or we make more food, or that can be a power up or something like that. And I think, oh, we don't have a way to make the game end. So that's maybe something we should add next. Although I thought we had that. I wonder if we've busted something. All right, maybe for the next video, we'll explore why we're not, uh, why the game's not ending.